All right, hello. Uh, today's lesson, 2.7, on page 71 of your fourth grade textbook. Our topic is multiplying using partial products. And uh, our unlock the problem question today, we're looking at how can you use what you know about the distributive property to break apart numbers to find products of three digit and one digit numbers. And so basically, if we look at 182 here and it says, how can you write this as a sum? Well, it would be 100 plus 80 plus two. And so if we were gonna use the distributive property with this, we would multiply six times the 100 6 times 80 plus 6 times 2. Okay, so the distributive property says the sum of the digits is the same as multiplying each add end and then adding those partial products. Okay, so let's look at number one. So the estimate for this is 6 times 2,000. So 6 times 200, we get 1,200 which would be 1,200. So our, <clears throat> the steps for doing this, we have a model shaded or drawn here to show that we broke 182 into 100 plus 80 plus two, and then we're multiplying by six. So our first section would be six times 100, and we see that right here, six times 100. So we write 600, okay, six times 100. The second box in our model is six times 80. So six times 80 is 480. Six times eight is 48, put the zero from the tens. In the last one, we have six times two, so we'd have six times two ones, which would give us 12 ones. So we've listed those all. And here would be the shaded areas in the whole model if we were to start at the beginning. And so once you have your partial products, we're gonna add up each of those partial, partial products. We're gonna add two plus nothing plus nothing is two. Eight and one is nine. And six and four is 10. So we have a total of 1,092, which is close to our estimate of 1,200. So that's a reasonable answer. Number 70, page 72. Use place value in partial products. Two times 4,572. So our estimate would be two times 5,000 because 4,572 is close to 5,000. Two times five is 10. We're in the thousands with 5,000. So put three zeros at the end. Remember we multiply the basic fact, five and two, and then put the same number of zeros at the end of the product. All right, so here we go. So first, we have two times four thousandths. So if we draw our box model, we have four thousand five hundred seventy-two. And that's all going to be multiplied by two. So two times four thousand is eight thousand. Okay, so two, two times 4,000, 8,000. Next, we go two times 500. Two times 500 would be 1,000. Next, we go two times 70. And two times 70 is 140. And last, two times two, which is four. So add up the partial products, four, four, 
one nine nine thousand one hundred forty four and that is fairly close to our estimate of ten thousand so it's, it's a reasonable answer number one use the model to find two times one hundred and thirty seven so we're going to start with 2 times 100, and that would be 100. Then we'd go 2 times 30, 2 times 30, which is 60. We finish with 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is 14. So let's just review where we got these. I went 100 times 2. That gave me 200. I went to 30 times 2, 30 times 2 is 60. And then 7 ones times 2, 14 ones. Add these together, we have 4, 7, 2, 274. Number 2, estimate, and we're going to record the product. So our estimate, 190 is close to 200. 200 times 3 is 600. Okay, I'm going to draw the model for this one on this piece of paper. So number two, the model for 190. Would be 100 plus 90 times three. So our first one would be three times 100. So we place 300 there. 3 times 100, then we'd move to 3 times 90, which would be 270. 9 times 3 is 27, put the 0 from the, one, uh, from the 90. Okay, and then the last one on our model, we notice we don't have any 1s. And so 3 times 0 would just be 0, so our last row there would just be 0. Because 3 times 0 is 0. Now add these together. 0, 7, 5. 570, which is close to 600. All right, number 3. 471 is close to 500 times 4. 4 times 5 is 20. And then put the two zeros from the 500. Okay, now let's show this as a model on our paper to give us some room so 400 471 and that's all multiplied by four so four times 400 four times 400 is 1000 600. Four times four is 16. Put the two zeros from the 400. And again, over here, it would be 400 times four. Okay, now four times 70. Four times seven is 28. And put the zero from the 70. Four times 70 is 280. And the last box, 4 times 1 is 4. So if I wasn't using the boxes, I'd go 4 times 400, 1,600. 4 times 70, 280. 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, add your partial products. We have 4, we have 8, we have 8, and we have 1. And 1,884 is close to 2,000. Number four, 3,439. I'm going to round down to 3,000. And I'm going to multiply by seven. Okay, 3,439 is closer to 3,000 than it is to 4,000. Seven times three, 21. And then put the three zeros from the 3,000. 21,000. Okay. 
I'm going to show that model on my paper. Three thousand plus four hundred plus thirty plus nine. And I'm going to multiply each of those place values by uh, place value digits by seven. Okay, so if we begin, we go seven times three thousand. We just did that, so we know that that's. 21,000. So I did 7 times 300 uh, times 3,000. Now we're going to go 7 times 400. 7 times 4 is 28. Put two zeros on, so 2,800. 7 times 400 is 2,800. Next, we go 7 times 30. 7 times 30 is 210, because 7 times 3 is 21, and we put the 0 from the 30. And finally, 9 times 7, 9 times 7 is 63. Okay, so let's add that together. We get 3 1s, 7 10s, 10 hundreds which can be renamed as 1,000, giving us 4,000 and two ten thousands. So 24,073, it's in the same neighborhood as 21,000. If we had rounded this to 4,000, we would have had 28,000. So we know our answer has to be between 21 and 28,000. So that is reasonable. All right, let's move on to page 73. And number five. Okay, so let's estimate this. 53. We know it's close to 50. And 50 times four. Four times five is 20. Put the zero from the five tens. Now let's solve it. I'm going to draw a model just to show what I'm multiplying by. So there's my 53. I split up 53 as 50 plus 3, and I'm going to multiply by 4. So we said 4 times, four times 50 is 200, and 4 times 3 is 12. And now add that together, we get 212. That is close to 200, so it's a reasonable answer. Number six, 473 is closer to 500 than it is to 400. So remember, if you're not certain, we want to round to the hundreds. We're going to circle the digit to the right. If it's five or greater, we're going to round up. So 473. It's 500, and we'll multiply by the 9. So my estimate, 9 times 5, 45, and then put the two zeros from the 500. Okay, so my answer should be close to 4,500. Number 6. Let's break, let's create our model. So we're going to break 473 into 400. 70 plus 3, 473. And each of those numbers will be, each of those add-ins will be multiplied by 9. And 9 times 400 is 3,600. 9 times 4 is 36, but the two zeros from the 400. Okay, because remember, the 4 is in the hundreds place. So this is 400, not 4. Okay, make sure you understand the place value here. Yes, I'm multiplying 9 times 4, but it's not just 4, it's 400. So we're going to go 9 times 4 is 36, and we're going to put the two zeros from the hundreds. All right, so now we go to the next one. And then next add-in is 9 times 70. 
So 9 times 70. 9 times 7 is 63 plus the 0 from the 70. Because I'm, I am multiplying 9 times 7 as a basic fact, but it's actually 9 times 70. Okay, the place value of the 7 is in the tens. So I'm multiplying 9 times 7 tens. So I get 630. And then finally, 9 times 3. 9 times 3 is uh, 9 times 3 once, which is 27. So those are three partial products. And we hit, get 7, 5, 6 and 6 is 12. So we'll regroup 1,200 as 1,200. And we wind up with 4,000. 257. Okay, that is fairly close to 4,500, so we're happy about that. Let's move on. Number seven, 608. Is that closer to 600 or 700? Hopefully you looked at that and said, oh, that's clearly closer to 600. All right, so we'll, we'll multiply six times six, which is 36. But I'm multiplying not by six ones, I'm multiplying by six hundreds. So six times six, 36 hundreds. Okay, let's break up number seven into its place value. I mean into its uh, add-ins. 600 plus eight. 600 plus eight. So we notice here we have no tens, right? We have 608 ones. That's it. 608. And we're going to multiply both of those add-ins by 6. So 6 times 600, we've already done that. That's 3,600. Now the next box would be for, next row would be for the tens. Well, I see 0 in the tens place, so that's going to be 0. And then I have 6 times 8, which is 48. All right, so let's add the partial products. Eight and nothing is eight. Four and nothing is four, so four tens. Six hundred and no hundreds is six hundred. Three thousand and no thousands is three thousand. Three thousand six hundred forty-eight, very close to three thousand six hundred. All right, number eight. Copy and solve, estimate, then record the product. So number eight, two times 78. I'm going to write it like this, two times 78. Okay, if I'm going to estimate, 78 is close to 80. So 80 times two. So my estimate, two times eight is 16. Put the zero from the 10. 160. So I should get an answer close to 160. All right, so let's split our 78 into 70 plus 8, and we're multiplying by 2. 2 times 70 is 140. And 2 times 8 is 16. Add those together. 6, 5, 1. So 156. And that is close to 160. Number 9. Number 9, we have 210 times 2. 210. Is close to 200 and two two hundreds is 400. That one we can just go 200 plus 200, so 400. So our estimate for number nine is 400. Our actual answer, so we have 200 plus 10. This time we have no ones. We're going to multiply that by two. 
2 times 200 is 400. 2 times 200 is 400. 2 times 10, 2 times 10 is 20. And then we have no ones. So I'll add that together. 420. And that is close to our estimate. All right, number 10. We get 682 times 9. All right, so let's round 682 to the nearest 100. 682 is closer to 700 than 600. So 700 times 9. 9 times 7, 63. And then put the two zeros from the 700. So our estimate for number 10, 6,300. So now let's, I'm gonna draw the model for 682 times nine, which means I'm gonna break up 682 as 600 plus 80 plus two. And then we're gonna multiply each of those add-ins by nine. So 9 times 6 is 5,400. 9 times 6, 54. Put the two zeros. Next, we're going to go 9 times 80. And 9 times 80 is 720. Because 9 times 8 is 72. So the basic math fact is 72. But it's 72 tens. So we have to put the zero, 720. And then the last add-in is 9 times 2, which is 18. Add up all these personal products, 8, 3, 11, so regroup, and 6. 6,138. And we are close to our estimate, so we're good. And number 11. we have 8,145 times 8. Okay, we're going to round to the nearest thousand, which would be 8,000 in this case, times 8. Our basic math fact, 8 times 8, 64. And then put the three zeros from the 8,000, so 64,000. And now we can draw the model for this number. One of the add-ins is 8,000, then 100, then 40, and finally 5. And all of those add-ins will be multiplied by 8. So 8 times 8, 64,000. 8 times 100, 800. 8 times 40, well 8 times 4 is 32. But it's 32 tens, so put the zero of the 40 at the end. And last, we have 8 times 5, which is 40 ones. All right, add up the partial products 0, 6, 11. We group the 1,000, so 4 times 1,000 is 5,000. Six plus not six ten thousands plus no ten thousands is sixty five thousand one hundred sixty. Okay, and that is close to our estimate. Okay, let's move on. Number twelve. Okay, 
So number 12, <clears throat> we know if we were making a model for number 12, we know that we'd have two sections and we have five in the ones, right? And then we have some number in the tens. Okay, so we want to find how many tens are here. Is it 15? Is it 25? Is it 35? Is it 45? 55? We're not sure. But we do know that is multiplied by 7. Okay, so we know that the 1s has to be 35. Okay, 7 times 5, 35. If I take away that 35 from our product of 455, that'll tell me how much is missing, and that'll help me figure out the 10s. So let's subtract the 35. Okay, where did I get the 35 from? Because 7 times 5. That I did know. I know 7 times 5 is part of my problem. 7 times 5 is 35. So subtract 0, 2, 42. So 420. So I know that there has to be some amount of tens that equals 42. I need 42 tens. 7 times what is 42 tens? 7 times 5 is 35. If you add more 7 more to 35, we'll get 42. So that would be a 6. So 7 times 6 is 420. Is 420 plus 35 455? It is, right? 5 plus nothing is 5. 3 and 2 is 5. So 5 tens, 400. So that's what it is. So the missing number up here is a 6. 65. Okay, 13. So 200 plus 40 plus 8. 200 plus 40 plus 8. So that's our model. And we know that each of those atoms is multiplied by 3. So this one's fairly easy. They just didn't put the uh, hundreds place for the, for the product. So let's just add these, multiply these together. 3 times 200 is 600. 3 times 40 is 120. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have 12 tens. 12 tens is 120. 3 times 8, 24. Add those together. 4, 4, 7. 744. So 7. 14. So I know that we have 300, 90, and 5. Now this one could be a little trickier because I don't know what goes here. I don't know how, what I'm multiplying each of the add-ins by. So I might have to use some common sense in this one. Hmm. Well, 395, that's close to 400, right? So I know... That 395 is in between 300 and 400. So 400 times what would be close to 2,300? Okay, 4 times 100 is 400. That's way off. 400 times 2 is 800. Still way off. 4 times 300. 4 times 3 is 12. Two zeros. So that's 1,200. No. 4 times 4. That's 16 and two zeros. That's 1,600. No. How about five? Five times four is 20. That's 2,000. Oh, we're getting closer. How about six? Six times four is 24. Okay, so it's five or six probably. 
Now there's another huge clue though in this problem. The ones place here has to be a zero. Well, the only factors that end in zero are five and 10. So it can't be the six. Six times nothing will give me 10. I'm sorry, it can't be the, the five. I said that backwards. Because five times five is going to be 25. Right? So it's not going to be a zero. So it can't be the five. So I'm going to try six. So let's go back to here and let's try six. Six times 300, 1,800. Six times 90, 540, because nine times six is 54 tens. 54 tens is 540. And six times five is 30. So let's add up these partial products. 0, 7, 13, so we grouped 1,000, and we get 2,370, and that matches that number. So it was 6. Okay. And the last one for this section, 15. 3,000. Seven hundred forty eight. Three thousand seven hundred forty eight times four. So it looks to me like they just left out the ten thousand of the product. Pretty simple enough. So four times three thousand. Twelve thousand. We have twelve thousands. Four times seven hundred is twenty eight hundreds. Twenty eight hundreds is two thousand eight hundred. Four times forty is one hundred and sixty. Sixteen tens is one hundred and sixty. And four times eight is thirty two ones. Let's add up our partial products and our as we go through from ones to the ten thousands, we should see these numbers matching. Two times nothing, two. Great. Six times three, nine tens. Great. Eight times 100. Eight plus 100 is 900. All right, great. We're, we're doing well here. Two and two is four. So that must be a four there. And one plus nothing is one. So that was our missing number, four. Okay, number 16, a store bought nine cases of light bulbs. There are 48 light bulbs in a case. How many light bulbs does the store buy? Okay, well, if we have the same amount in every case, which we do here, we have 48 light bulbs in every case, we can multiply. So we're going to go 48 times 9. Okay. In my head, I see that 48 is close to 50, and 50 times 9 would be 450. So I want to be somewhere close to 450. All right, so we have 40, and we have 8. 40 plus 8. And each of those add-ins will be multiplied by 9. So 9 times 40, 360. 9 times 40. And then we have 9 times 8, 72. Let's add those together. 2, 13, regroup the 100. So we get 432. That was close to 450, so I'm confident that it's 432 light bulbs. Number 17. Hugo drives 208 miles to and from work each week. How many miles does he drive in four weeks? 208 miles every week for four weeks. Every week's 208 miles. So I can multiply him because they all have the same amount in each week. 
208 is close to 200. So I would expect an answer of about 800. Okay, so we have 200, 8. We have no tens in this problem. And we're multiplying by 2, uh, by 4. 4 will multiply each of the add-ins. So 4 times 200 is 800. Again, we said there are no tens. And 4 times 8 is 32. So 832 miles. Is that reasonable? Sure it is. So 832 miles. And number 18. Coach Ramirez bought eight cases of bottled water for a road race. There are 24 bottles in each case. After the race, 34 bottles of water were left. How many bottles were used at the race? And explain. Okay, so in 18, we know that we have eight cases of bottle of bottled water that were purchased. We also know that there's 24 bottles in every case. Well, that's exactly 16, right? So we're just going to multiply 24 times 8, and that's going to tell me how many water bottles were purchased. So 24 times 8 will tell me how many water bottles were purchased. And then I know that there were 34 bottles left. That means I'm going to have to subtract to find out how many were actually used. So let's start with 24 times 8. All right? And we know that 24 is broken up as 20 plus 4. And we're going to multiply each of those add-ins by 8. 8 times 20 is 160. 8 times 20, 160. And 8 times 4 is 32. Add up the partial products. We get 6 and 3 is 9 and 1. So they purchased 192 bottles. And they were left with 34. So if we subtract what was left from how many they bought, that will tell me how many they've used. The amount used plus the amount left should equal 192. I can't take 4 from 2, so I'll rename the 10s as eight, 8 tens and rename the 1s as 12 ones. 12 take away 4 is 8. 8 tens take away 3 tens is 5. 1 take away nothing is 1. So they used 158 bottles of water. Okay, but it says explain. Okay, well, if you multiply 8 times 24, we get 192 bottles purchased. Then, if you subtract what was left, thirty four, you'll get how much was used, get how many bottles were used. Okay. They use 158 bottles of water. If you multiply 8 times 24, you get 192 bottles purchased. Then if you subtract what was left, 34, you'll get how many bottles were used? 158. Okay. And page 74. All right, number 19. Use the diagram. Look at the picture. Kylie has 832 songs on her portable media player. So this is the portable media player. And it says it can hold up to 9,000 songs. The battery life for audio, 22 hours. Okay. 
So she has 832 songs out of a possible 9,000. Lance has three times as many songs. How many fewer songs can Lance add to his player than Kylie can add to hers? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find out how many songs Lance has. So we know that Kylie has 832 songs. We know that Lance wants, has three times as many. So we're going to go, Lance would be 832 times three. He has three times as many as Kylie, and Kylie has 832. So let's do our place, our model. We have 832, and each of those add-ins is multiplied by three. Three times 800 is 2,400. Three times 30 is 90, and three times two is six. Add up the partial products. And so Lance has 2,496 songs. That wasn't the question. The question is, how many fewer songs can Lance add to his player than Kylie can add to hers? Okay, so remember, the media player can hold 9,000 songs. So now we need to take both of them, both of their numbers of songs, and subtract from 9,000. So Kylie, I'm just going to keep this clear. I'm going to put Kylie there, and I'm going to say 9,000 take away 832. And then I'm going to put down below it, I'm going to put Lance. He can have up to 9,000. And he has currently 2,496. Okay, so so this is one way to solve it. There, there are alternative ways to solve this. Two from nothing, I can't do that. So let's just rewrite the 90 hundreds. as 899 hundreds and 899 tens and 10 ones. And now we can subtract. 10 take away two is eight. Nine take away three is six. Nine take away eight is one. So she can add 8,168 songs. Lance, again, let's change this to Eight hundred ninety-nine and the ten ones. Ten take away six is four. Nine take away nine is zero. Nine take away four is five. Eight take away two is six. Okay, so how many fewer? Kylie has eight thousand one hundred sixty-eight. Take away Lance is six thousand five hundred four. Four. Six. I can't take five from one, so rename the eight thousand and seven thousand and eleven hundreds. Eleven take away five is six. Seven take away six is one. One thousand six hundred sixty-four. Now, you recall I said there is an alternative way. Uh, let me write down sixteen hundred and sixty-four. We know that Lance has 2,496 songs. Kylie had 832. So just what is the difference between the number of songs they have? So six take away two is four. Nine take away three is six. I can't take eight from four. So I'll rename that. 14 take away eight is six. And we still get 1,664. Okay, so that's a simpler way of solving that one. Okay, I know that if I make up the difference between these two, then the rest is all the same. 
Okay, if I gave Kylie 1,664 songs, she would have the same amount as Lance. And then from there, up to 9,000, they would all be the same. So this is the, the only difference between them. So 1,664 fewer songs. Okay, number 20. James wants to buy the new portable media, media player shown. He has five times as many songs as Susan. Susan has 1,146 songs. Will all of his songs fit on the portable media player? How many songs does James have? Okay, so we need to know 1,146 songs that Susan has, and we need to know that he has five times as many. So number 20, 1,146 times five. Remember, the media player can hold up to 9,000 songs. So as long as his total is less than 9,000, he can, he can fit those songs on the media player. All right. So let's break up 1,146. 1,146. And each of those add-ins need to be multiplied by five. Five times 1,000, five thousandths. Five times 100, five times 100, 500. Five times 40, five times 40, 200. And five times six, 30. Let's add those together, zero, three, Seven, five. So he has 5,730 songs. Will that fit on there? Sure. Yes. Will all his songs fit on the portable media player? Yes. And he, James, has 5,730 songs. All right, 21. So the sum, addition, the sum of a three-digit number and a one-digit number is 217. The product, if I multiply those two numbers, I get 642. If one of the numbers is between 200 and 225, what are the numbers? Okay, so this is what this is telling me. I have to have a three-digit number, okay, a three-digit number plus a one-digit number, and that's going to be 217. Then when I take that three-digit number and multiply by the one-digit number, I have to get 642. These both have to be the same numbers and get these two answers. <clears throat> okay, so now I know a couple things. I know that the one-digit number has to be between 1 and 9, right? So, and I know that it has to be between 200 and 225. So, if I was to take 217 and start subtracting Okay, so I want to do that on here because it might take us a while. This is a guess and check type problem. So if I subtract 1 from 217, that means my two numbers would be, have to be 216 and 1, right? Okay, so 216 plus 1 is 217. When I multiply that, do I get 642? No. I get 216. So that's not possible. So let's try the next number. Again, I know it has to be between 1 and 9. So 217, take away 2. So that's going to give me 215 plus 2. 
215 plus 2 is 217. Okay, so I met the, the addition part of it. Now, when I multiply, do I get 200, do I get 642? So 2 times 200 is 400, 2 times 10 is 20, and 2 times 5 is 10. 430. Eh, nope, doesn't work. So let's try 3. 217, take away 3, leaves me 214. 214 plus 3 is 217. All right, so again, we met the addition part of it. Now, when I multiply 214 times 3, will I get 642? I think I might. Okay, 3 times 200 is 600, so that's promising. And 3 times 10 is 30. And 3 times 4 is 12. Let's add those together. We get 642. Okay, so when I add 214 plus 3, I get 217. When I multiply 214 times 3, I get 642. So both of those work. Okay, we met both requirements. Now, is the numbers are the numbers I'm using between 200 and 225? Yeah, 214 is, right? So 214 and the single digit number is 3. So 214 and three. 214 and three. And last one. Mrs. Jackson bought six gallons of juice for a party. Each gallon has 16 cups. After the party, three cups of juice were left over. At the party, how many cups did people drink? Show your work and explain how you found your answer. All right. So six gallons and every gallon has 16 cups. So we know that that's just going to be 6 times 16. Every gallon has 16 cups. Okay. We're going to break up the 16 as 10 plus 6. And we're going to multiply by 6. Each of the atoms multiply by 6. So the first one, 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 6 is 36. Add that together, we get 96. So 96 cups. But that's not the question. That's how many were purchased. Okay. And there were three cups left over. So 96 take away three tells me that they used 93 cups of juice. So at the party, how many cups did people drink? People drink 93 cups of juice. Show your work. 16 times 6 equals 96. 96 take away 3 equals 93. Okay, so that's it for lesson 2.7. Our next uh, opportunity to talk, we're going to be talking about the uh, chapter two, mid chapter checkpoint. So we're halfway through the chapter. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.